Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining our fourth webinar of the GHIT PDP's webinar series, session four, with Find, titled Innovative Diagnosis and Partnerships for All. We are pleased to have you all from all over the world today. I am Eriko Koyama of GHIT Fund, and I'll be the moderator of this webinar today. This webinar is sponsored by many organizations, the Japan Alliance on Global NTDs, JAG NTD, Japan Association of Clinical Reagent Industries, Japan Pharmaceutical Manufacturers Association, JPMA, Japanese Association for Infectious Diseases, Japanese Society of Parasitology, Japanese Society of Tropical Medicine, and Japanese Society of Vaccinology. Here is the overview of the today's session featuring FIND today. PDP focusing on developing diagnosis for the neglected diseases. Please allow me to give you some guidance about this webinar before we, before we start. Today's session will be conducted in English, but we also have simultaneous translation to Japanese available. If you wish to listen to the webinar in Japanese, please choose Japanese from the interpretation box, which can be found on your right-hand corner of this, web, uh, of this Zoom window. Please feel free to send your questions anytime during the webinar via the Q&A box at the bottom of this window. We also accept questions in Japanese. And we also can take questions to be addressed verbally. And we will give you the instructions during the Q&A session later. If you have any technical issues, please contact the email address indicated here. Please kindly note that we will be recording today's webinar and we are planning to update it on GHIT Fund's website after the webinar. There will also be a questionnaire at the end of this webinar, so it would be great if you could take two minutes of your time to answer them. We have started this webinar series to maintain the momentum and foster dialogue about the R&D community's role, challenges, and opportunities in the fight against neglected diseases during and past the COVID-19 pandemic era. In this session four with FIND, we will focus on achievements and challenges for the development of diagnosis for neglected diseases. Now, I would like to introduce the panelists of today's webinar. Today's panelists will be Dr. Sergio Carmona and Mr. Willow Brock of FIND, Professor Shinjiro Hamano of Nagasaki University, and Professor Takafu Mitsuboi of Ehime University. Thank you all the, to all the panelists uh, who joined us um, also early in the morning. Now, we would like to start our first presentation uh, from FIND, which will be from um, Mr. Vido Brock of FIND, followed by Dr. Sergio Carmona. So Vilo, if you could, ah, thank you, share your screen and unmute yourself and start your presentation. Sorry, the unmuting and the sharing screen was not working at the same time. <laughs> um, okay, yes, the unmuting works now. So yep. if you could share your screen, please take your time. Uh, here we go. Okay, thank you and good morning, everyone. Can you see my screen? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. So first of all, welcome everyone to this uh, seminar about uh, diagnostics in collaboration with, with GHIT. I would first like to express my sincere thanks to GHIT and all of our uh, partners and collaborators that we have been working on uh, since actually inception of GHIT um, uh, many years ago. Um, my name is Willow Brock. I am leading the external affairs team at FIND, which is a function to help create partnerships with both pharmaceutical industry, with our donors, with our academic partners, our partners in healthcare in, in low and middle income countries that we plan to serve. 
Uh, today we were talking a little bit about product development partnerships, which I will start with, and then my colleague Dr. Camona will speak about some of the examples of projects we've done with uh, GHIT and with Japanese partners, and we will end with some discussions looking forward to the world post-COVID, as we all hope that will be a world like that anytime soon. Um, I will start the presentation uh, talking a little bit about FIND, just to give you the background. So FIND is what we call a product development partnership, <clears throat> essentially a public-private partnership, trying to bring together partners to develop uh, products in diagnostics, testing, and surveillance for people around the world, especially in low middle income countries, um, often for diseases where there's not enough market incentive to have products developed by industry alone. We were established in 2003, um, focusing on TB diagnostics, which we will, which we're still working on quite intensively. And we will speak about one of those examples with Fujifilm uh, today. We are also since uh, two years, the co-convener together with the Global Fund of the Access to COVID-19 Tools Accelerator, which is a WHO-led partnership that tries to mobilize both global resources and a global response to the COVID pandemic. And our role, of course, is in the diagnostics pillar. We are a WHO collaborative center, as you can see, which effectively indicates that we try to be a neutral broker of data and science to help set guidelines for diagnostic products in the world. And we would therefore help, uh, on the one hand, companies, academics with promising products to collect the data to lead to, uh, to guidelines from WHO. And at the same time with WHO, when these guidance is there to move products um, to partners and into use in, uh, in and around the world. We're also a SAGE member at WHO and we are ISO certified for our clinical trial work. As you can see on the bottom, our overall goals from a new strategy, which published just six months ago, is over the next three to five years, work, with, um, so, uh, work on saving 1 million lives through diagnostics save healthcare systems in the world $1 billion through more effective and efficient use of products and empower at least 10 countries with a intensive collaboration on um, uh, ramping up diagnostic and surveillance. Why are we doing this? Of course, because diagnostic gaps are massive. I think everyone on this call with a background in diagnostics knows that diagnostic is the largest uh, gap in the treatment care cascade, which means that People who are trying to look for diagnostics in especially low middle income countries simply cannot find them uh, unless they travel or have exorbitant expense on this. As you can see here, only 1% of primary care clinics have basic diagnostic capacity as defined by WHO. There is even no test for 60% of infectious diseases with outbreak potential. So when we look at COVID, it's not strange that we had an outbreak of a disease given the, the lack of appropriate tests. PDPs have been working with GHIT since its start, and we're one of the core partners of the GHIT fund. And one of the things that the product development partnerships together have done is, um, is align itself because we are often very specific and technical in nature in a dis different disease. So there are um, at least 12 large international organizations that class classify as PDP alongside FINE. I've been leading the um, the collaboration between the PDPs in something called the PDP Coalition, very aptly named. And we, uh, I just want to present a few of the findings of this group. So for the wider context on this webinar, where FIND fo uh, focuses on diagnostics and on surveillance, we have partners that look at treatments for neglected diseases like the NDI, we look at um, organizations like IVCC that are look at uh, vector control and malaria, international partnership for uh, microbicides, uh, vaccine uh, initiatives like the European Vaccine uh, the Initiative and the International Vaccine Initiative, TB vaccines, AIDS vaccines, malaria treatments and TB treatments. So this is a large group of organizations covering most of the diseases relevant for low middle income countries and in alignment with the Sustainable Development Goal 2030. A report was created in 2020, looking back at 20 years of development. And I think it's very relevant also for GHIT and for our partners on the call to look at these numbers. Um, 
as you can see, even though most of the PDP started around early 2000s, like, uh, like Find it in 2003, the number of products initially coming to market in the first decade were only nine. This is logical if you imagine that around 2000, there were no more products in the pipeline for um, neglected tropical diseases, for TB, for malaria, um, as industry had to largely step back because of the lack of uh, market for these products. These investments, however, in products for this market in, um, in the period 2000, 2020, 2010, 2020, became already 66. So 66 new products, including new drugs for the treatment of resistant tuberculosis, single dose treatments for malaria, uh, uh, the first all oral core for sleeping sickness, as well as a, a variety of products in uh, uh, like the, the, the gene expert TB treatment were, were generated in that area. So GIT is now at a moment that I think is similar to the uh, ending the first decade of PDPs. And I think when we look at the GHIT portfolio, I'm hoping that with these partners on the call, we can get that same ramp up of products in the next decade with GHIT support. So um, we all know that uh, although COVID has shown us that things can be ramped up quite dramatically, that we need time to develop products and that we need long-term investment from governments and partners to make sure we maximize on the potential for new products. So um, beyond the delivery of products, the combined PDPs together have 375 new technologies, again, including vaccines, drugs, factor control products, and uh, diagnostics in the pipeline. This is where the collaboration between FIND, GHID, and the partners in Japan comes in. There's a number of those products we are already co-developing. And again, my colleague will speak about that in a moment. But there are many more products that are available, sometimes from academic partners, sometimes what we would call an orphan product, a good product with solid backgrounds, but with no partners to help commercialize. And all those products will be a potential open for um, collaboration with Japanese, Japanese academics, with Japanese nonprofits, and of course, with Japanese industry, um, as you will see. The impact is, is tremendous, and we'll talk about some of the diseases we're talking about. Um, but I would also like to sort of sort of end this this part by saying we work very closely with local communities, care providers, researchers. We ensure that products before they get developed um, are known for their characteristics that would make maximum impact to healthcare uh, in low middle income countries. We also start working together with partners from the beginning to establish what prices and costs for these would be relevant and acceptable, both to international donors like Global Fund, like Gavi and others, but also uh, um, international financing agencies like World Bank and of course, national governments across Africa, Asia and Latin America. So equitable access on the one hand is being planned from the beginning, but what is also important for this group is we help our partner companies to access those markets and make sure that their products that are being developed will be able to be used around the world. So I want to give this initial introduction and now join, uh, get joined by my colleague, Dr. Carmona to talk about GHIT and our partner projects. Sergio, the floor is yours. Great, thanks Willow. And a great introduction. So thank you again, um, uh, colleagues, uh, both at GHIT and our industry partners and academic uh, institutions that are joining us uh, today. Um, next slide, Willow, please. Um, this is just to highlight that this is not new. FIND has been working with GHIT and many collaborators from industry and academia uh, from Japan, as, as you can see on the left side of the panel. I'll highlight some of the work we've done with Fuji Film. Uh, we rely a lot on Otsuka and many other partners, uh, as you know. Um, we also been tracking uh, very closely how other industry partners in Japan have contributed to um, a pipeline of tests that have been developed to address the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And we look forward, as you can see on the right side of your screen, many of these partners uh, developing really good products that could uh, access uh, other markets in, in, in the global south. Um, so that's an invitation to some of you here. I've got three cases that I would like to highlight that have been a success uh, through the generous funding uh, that we have received uh, from GHIT and from uh, the collaborations uh, with many uh, partners in, in Japan. 
The first one, which is the probably the most advanced we had, is a collaboration with Fujifilm. They have developed a, a new generation of point of care um, diagnostic tool um, for TB. TB remains a huge burden uh, globally with an estimated uh, over 10 million uh, infected people. COVID, as Willow points out, although has advanced uh, in many ways uh, access to diagnostics, has also interrupted uh, supply chain and clinical and health providers services in many of these countries. So more than ever, we need simple to use diagnostics like the one I'm uh, showcasing here. TB lamb is one of those. It's a rapid diagnostic test, initially uh, only um, with sufficient performance for HIV positive uh, people. But as you can see on the bottom left of your screen, um, through the work that we've done with Fuji, we've managed to improve uh, the performance of this test. We're also tracking new generation or third generation of LAM. This is a urine marker of TB from other manufacturers. So it's by no means a done deal. And there's still much needed work and investment uh, to address uh, the requirements for diagnostics in TB. What's key here is that molecular diagnostic is considered the gold standard. However, access and time to results uh, can only be resolved with a much easier sample type like urine in this case. So much work to be done and more to do. Another case is schistosomiasis, a disease that affects again the poor, the poor that live in rural areas uh, that are located in either uh, agricultural settings or fishing villages. Uh, it's uh, a disease that transmits through water, through a parasite, uh, war, war, um, um, parasitic water, uh, uh, worm. Um, and the diagnostic needs are critical. It's estimated that over, I think about 200 million people are, uh, are infected annually. Right now, we can only treat this empirically, in other words, without a very uh, accessible diagnostic. And together with GHIT, we have a new, um, developed a new tool uh, that uh, detects uh, this parasite uh, in, in many ways. And um, We've got two cases here from the Philippines and Kenya, uh, where we have uh, shown early uh, signs of good performance of a test. So this is an area again that we would like to highlight uh, that needs attention and further work. And we're grateful again for uh, this having started with GHIT. Next slide. Thank you, uh, Sergio. And I would just like to add for the audience that yeah. uh, the co-investment from GHIT in schistosomiasis drugs um, that oh, is also yeah. basically helping to create a test and treat strategy for the future. Again, some years off, but very promising joint investments that is really a quite leverage on the work that, that's being done. Yeah, good point. So this is uh, this, this campaigns of massive uh, drug availability to prevent, uh, but again, a diagnostic tool will narrow that down and allow for much more targeted uh, uh, people to get um, treatment and hopefully elimination. And the last one is, it's a disease that doesn't necessarily affect many people, but is really debilitating. Uh, Brulee ulcer, it's uh, caused by a mycobacterium similar to TB or leprosy, uh, a lot more tricky to treat. And definitely in this case, Will, as you point out, molecular diagnostics are not useful because of the time that it takes to, to diagnose and because of where these individuals are affected. It's apparently about 33 countries that are still reporting Burudi ALSA. And here we're developing um, an antigen RDT, uh, a rapid test uh, similar to the COVID one that could be uh, very helpful to uh, reduce um, the number of cases and early treatment uh, of these uh, individuals affected with a, a disease that affect the skin, as you can see here, and the, and the bone and it's hard to eradicate. Um, next slide. Anything you want to add here, <laughs> Willa? No, thanks. So as Willa pointed out, FIND is uh, co-leading the pillar on diagnostics uh, for the accelerator uh, of COVID tools together with the Global Fund. Here, no, we not only uh, in, intending to make a large number of diagnostic tests available globally, but also accelerate uh, R&D. Um, 
both targeting machine learning, artificial intelligence, ensure that diagnostic tools are connected and can the data can inform uh, global, I mean, public health officials, accelerate the access to next generation sequencing and CRISPR technology, something that Japan is also leading in, in many cases. Wearables and uh, home uh, testing is key to uh, in, power individuals and uh, communities to take care of their health and contribute to the elimination or, uh, or control of this pandemic. And also, as you know, from many of the manufacturers present today, engaging with the private sector is key. And uh, that has been shown as a success already, as we were pointed out, to accelerate uh, access to diagnostics, not only for COVID, but we hope that also these uh, investment leverage uh, the needs for neglected tropical diseases, tuberculosis and malaria. Next slide. So uh, focusing back on, on the accelerator, one of the key um, um, deliverables and focus was to harness all the innovation that we've seen, secure access uh, and uh, deploy affordable, good quality tests uh, globally. We know that breaking the chain of transmission will uh, end this pandemic sooner. We need to uh, enable and target public health interventions and treatment. Uh, but uh, in this case, diagnosing sooner and, um, and broadly is key. And also keeping an eye, as we know now with Omicron, of new variants of concern and in the future, other threats that could be of pandemic uh, proportions. So next slide, uh, Willow. So as you can see here at the bottom, the, it, the, and the green line, it's an example of the timeline that took to develop a rapid test for malaria. It's, it's measuring in years to decades. We need to commend ourselves and many of the partners here today that the timeline to develop a molecular test and a rapid uh, antigen test was much reduced to, to just months together with uh, the Global Fund and GHIT, et cetera. Now, these developments have been expedited, but also um, affordable. So in other words, these tests have become uh, uh, at a price that many other countries can also access to. I think Willow, uh, if I understand correctly, uh, by January 2021, the cost of a rapid test was uh, around two and a half dollars, and today is close to one dollar, correct me? Uh, and hopefully this is gonna be accessible to many countries uh, in need. Next slide. And I want to pause here, I've got a few minutes to uh, take a moment to think how to do this better. Together with the G7 countries, uh, in this case led last year by the UK government, uh, a roadmap was considered uh, to address uh, an urgent need to respond both in terms of treatment, vaccines, and diagnostics within 100 days. So from the time of declaration of uh, a global emergency uh, to uh, um, the development of large-scale rapid diagnostics, uh, if we could do this in 100 days, we will be able to uh, contain the, the size and the time that it would take to uh, avert, uh, I mean, to, to control a pandemic. Here, uh, together with CEPI, we look uh, forward to engaging with many of you to see how could this be possible for diagnostics. I know it's easier to develop a molecular based type of diagnostic, but much more challenging to have a rapid scalable uh, diagnostics like those uh, that we know now for lateral flow. And um, Willow, I think, um, is anything you want to add here? Of all, I would say, developing a vaccine or, or a therapeutic within 100 days is much more challenging. So we have an opportunity here with GHIT and many of those industry partners today and, and academia to see how can this uh, vision or roadmap be achieved uh, with a very tight uh, timeline. Anything you'd like to add? Yeah, no, thank you, Sergio. And I think we're ready and also for uh, people to ask us questions. But what we see in this case is that in the next, uh, the next uh, five years or so, overlapping with the next replenishment period of GHIT, we have a marathon, as we call it, before the sprint of 100 days happens to happen. Um, we think that pilot diagnostics will be developed in advance for pathogen groups and viruses that we know are of risk. We look at things like platform technologies that will make it easier. Because as you indicated, although molecular tests are easier 
to develop on the short run. We did it in just a few weeks for COVID. The scale up, however, is a lot harder for molecular tests and uh, making them available and having sufficient tests available for the world at scale is going to be a big challenge. So working with manufacturers both in Japan as well as affiliates in the rest of the world, as well as with uh, potential um, manufacturing capacity that we're developing in Asia, Africa, and Latin America, we would want to make sure that we are ready when the pandemic hits by be and we are being prepared. In other words, we don't expect this to be a miracle happening next time. I think governments like Japan, the UK, the US are willing to invest quite significantly to work with all of us in academics, in industry, um, and with somebody like us to ensure that this is happening. So I think we'll leave it there. Um, just to say that with this group that we have on the on the on the call today, with the support from the Japanese government, with the replenishment for GHIT, we can ensure that we get everyone in the world a test that they need when they need it and at the price they can afford. Thank you very much, and over back to you, Erica. Thank you so much, Sergio and Willow, for your introduction to the PDP, the Product Development Partnerships, and also the key message of the need of, of continuous investment to these neglected diseases. And your collaboration also with the Japanese partners. Thank you for explaining that very briefly, and as well as about the ACT accelerators and the work on the COVID-19. Thank you so much again for your time and presentation today. And, uh, to the audience, feel, please feel free to use the Q&A box to address any questions you may have for this webinar. Now, I would like to um, move on to the next, next speaker. So I would like to introduce Professor Shinjiro Hamano of Nagasaki University. So Hamano-sensei, thank you so much for sharing your screen. And if you could put it to the presentation mode, okay. Yes, perfect, Hamano Sensei. Thank you very much. Uh, first, I would like to appreciate GHIT for giving us a chance to introduce our global partnership for product development to combat neglected tropical diseases. I graduated a School of Medicine, Kumamoto University in 1993 and started investigating infectious disease, mainly from immunological point of view in Kyushu University. After that, since then, uh, I have been interested in tropical infectious disease and host defense mechanism to microbe, especially parasite. Besides the immunological approach, I conduct field study on a various NTD, especially leishmaniasis and schistosomiasis in Asia and Africa. I belong to the Institute of Tropical Medicine, again, Nagasaki University. And uh, we realized that tropical disease and other health problem should be addressed from a global perspective. Based on this understanding, uh, we aim to overcome tropical disease, particularly infectious disease and the various health problems associated with them in cooperation with related institutions and organizations to strive for excellence in the following area, area shown here, one, two, three, and the partnership for product development contribute not only to disease control and health promotion in the tropics by applying the fruits of the research, but also simultaneously stimulate or promote leading research in tropical medicine and international health, and in the same time, uh, contribute to cultivation of the researcher and the specialist in the field mentioned above. The purpose of the GHIT to facilitate international partnership for product development matches well the mission of our institute, NECAN. We have been involved in the partnership to develop vaccine to leishmaniasis, 
in this way with this partner or to Chagas disease. And also to develop diagnostics to leishmaniasis and schistosomiasis with including find here. In this session, I am requested to answer a list of specific questions shown here. First, I'd like to answer how we first learned about PDP and the PDP of our session find. In February 2014, I talked with Professor Satoska, Ohio State University in the US-Japan panel meeting held at ICDDRP Bangladesh and initiated communication for product development. Next year, we made a multidisciplinary team with complementary expertise with uh, Dr. Nakashi Hira from USFDA and uh, Professor Matulashuski at Magir University and uh, Genova Biopharmaceuticals. Then uh, we submitted a research proposal to get the GHIT, to the GHIT aiming the development of live attenuated uh, prophylactic vaccine for leishmaniasis. And uh, it was successfully approved. And this is the first PDP for me and have been successfully moving forward in this way. In these two projects, uh, we successfully generated marker-free centering gene deficient abundant Leishmania major strain using CRISPR-Cas technique and demonstrated safety of this strain in immunodeficient hosts, their failure to survive in sandfly vector and inability to revert to virulence after multiple animal passage, also demonstrated efficacy of this uh, strain, vaccine strain, in preventing sandfly transmitted cutaneous as well as visceral leishmaniasis in mice and hamsters. And we showed that this uh, strain parasite induced protective immune response and parasite specific effector memory T cells. We also developed generated marker free centering gene deficient Leishmania mekishkana using CRISPR Cas technique. And this parasite, this species are endemic prevalent in the new world. In this way, uh, these findings are published in Nature Communications and uh, Communication Biology and uh, NPJ vaccines uh, in this year. Aiming first in human trial, uh, we have been developing master cell bank and working cell bank for this storing uh, vaccine strain at ATCC USA for manufacturing of CGMP product in an endemic country. Also validating the assay for final characterization of CGMP product and preparing regulatory dossier for phase one study with regulatory authority in the US. Simultaneously, uh, we have initiated the discussion with our Indian vaccine manufacturer for phase one study in the India. And concerning with the uh, skin test uh, diagnosis supported by this uh, project, uh, we have developed GLP material for l antigen for skin test for leishmaniasis as a surrogate marker for immunity and exposure. So I uh, introduced the outline of the vaccine development. So I would like to move and introduce how we learned about the PDP with find on schistosomiasis. And uh, uh, we are supported by GHIT 
uh, for diagnosis uh, associated with cystosomiasis. Uh, two projects. These two projects is a uh, distinct but associated somehow. Therefore, at first, I'd like to show the background of these two projects with find. As shown by the find, our cystosomiasis affect uh, 230 million people worldwide. And the control program largely based on MDA, mass drug administration with plagi counter. However, current diagnostic methods have a limit, various limitations shown here. Therefore, new diagnostic or monitoring tool are urgently needed to support, monitor, and sustain cystosomiasis control and elimination program worldwide. Now, so with the progress of the control program, uh, using this uh, kind of approach, uh, both prevalence and infection intensity of cystosomiasis decline with time. So prevalence and intensity of the infection. So indicating the sensitivity of the currently available uh, tool, uh, for example, to detect the egg in urine or stool, and the microscopy will be below the satisfying level. Therefore, the point is how uh, we can uh, monitor and survey transmission or retransmission of cystosomiasis in a pre and post elimination setting, aiming to uh, produce this kind of product. Uh, we applied these two projects in 2017 and 2020 for detecting antibody and antigen, CAA antigen by RDT. In August 2017, I uh, received a message from uh, Maria Leiden University asking the possibility of our collaboration on cystosomiasis. Uh, either vaccine development or new diagnosis development, then considering our ongoing research and unmet need in the world, I proposed to work on new diagnostics development and made a partnership with London uh, Leiden University Medical Center and Ligacha. And we have kept the association with FIND and we are, this is supported by this GHIT project. Uh, we have identified a protein or glycan antigens target and profiled diagnostic antibody responses to each antigen. Now uh, we are in the process to identify and validate a specific target for each uh, use case, which means uh, in what case this kind of uh, antigen is applicable practically. In November, 2019, I get a call uh, from the, the GHIT about the possibility to have a partnership with the consortium led by FIND on C the development of CARDT. I'm not sure, but uh, personally think that uh, the, uh, this action by the GHIT was associated with the former project with Leiden University Medical Center and Ligacha. Therefore, they asked such kind of possibility. And uh, fortunately, uh, we uh, started our communication with FIND and other member of the consortium and submitted the grant application and it was approved in July 2020. And under COVID-19, uh, we completed the first field of evaluation of prototype uh, in the Philippines and uh, it yielded very encouraging result. So in this consortium, Neken Nuitum is uh, monitoring the field study of the prototype in the Philippines at the first. Then we'll manage the clinical trial after uh, design look 
in Kenya and in the Philippines with the support from the find. Lessons learned from the partnerships are that uh, making international multidisciplinary team with complementary expertise is critical, which can bring the project forward from academic research to the product development with overcoming scientific, technical, and regulatory hurdles. Also, managing multi-stakeholder consortia with leadership and coordination is essential and crucial. The challenge we have faced are establishing strong relationship in the absence of in-person meeting. The, this uh, project got funded in July 2020, in the first year of COVID-19. To this day, we have not had a chance to meet the find team, nor any of other partners in person. Yet, uh, we've successfully completed the first field evaluation with a very promising result in the Philippines. In addition, under COVID-19 pandemic, we had to monitor field-based study outside of Japan with new partners, including the partner in the Philippines. We had to find innovative way to work around this by developing a new tool and hiring a clinical research associate to be present at the field site in the Philippines instead of us. So uh, after having this kind of experience, uh, we'd like to try having an independent broker with expertise in managing multi-stakeholder consortia in health R&D and access. We are not so familiar with this kind of area. We need to be more familiar with the regulatory process in FDA, EMA, WHO, or other national authorities for the development of new vaccines, drugs, and diagnosis. And our organization will promote and strengthen public-private partnership for sustainable, efficient, and fruitful development of R and D activity, and this this kind of activity uh, well uh, match the mission of the institute Nekken Nagasaki University. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Hamano Sensei, for your presentation and about your work on vaccine against leishmaniasis the DETECT sister program for the development of sensitive diagnostics to the monitor the schistosomiasis and as well on the CAA RDT project with FIND, as well as sharing your experience of completing the field study during this COVID pandemic era, which must have been very challenging for you, especially yeah. when not being able to uh, commute to the area. Right. And, and thank you also for sharing your kind experience and also lessons learned um, from, your, from your work. Thank you so much, Hamano Sensei. Thank you very much too. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, to the audience, you're welcome to submit your questions anytime during this webinar uh, via the Q&A box. So now I would like to introduce our last but not least um, presenter for today, Professor Takafumi Tsuboi of Ehime University. So Tsuboi Sensei, thank you so much uh, for attending today. And yes, if you could start sharing your screen. Like yes, this. yes, we can see, see your presentation. See. Okay, so the uh, pointer. Okay, can you see my pointer here? Okay. Yes, we can see your pointer too, thank you. Okay, so... Uh, my name is uh, Takahama Tsuboi from Ehime University, Japan. And thank you very much for inviting me as a speaker in this uh, nice, nice, nice simple webinar series. And uh, today I'd like to talk about innovation through partnerships uh, with the PDPs, especially uh, uh, from the academia viewpoint, because I'm originally 
origin, still now the basic scientist in academia, but now deeply involved in the uh, product development. So uh, I'd like to uh, introduce, uh, especially my our history and current activity briefly based on the malaria diagnostics and mainly for malaria vaccine uh, development. And first of all, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, our city, Matsuyama, for the following <laughs> guest. Uh, Matsuyama is located in the western part of Japan, as you can see in the map. And Matsuyama is very famous for its castle, beautiful castle with cherry blossom and hot spring, a very famous hot spring here. And lastly, uh, famous for malaria. Then, oops. Can you see my slide? Um, sorry, I think it's broken. Maybe if you could stop sharing your slide. Um... Okay, please. Oh, that is. So uh, could you share my slide from your side? Oh, okay. Okay, yes, we have just unconnected. So if you could start sharing your screen again, maybe okay. try again. How about this? Oops. Uh... I think something went wrong. Okay. Maybe yes, yes, we can share the screen. Oh, yeah, so, yes, just hold on a mi minute for us. So the second slide, please. Okay, so this is an outline of my talk today. Uh, first, briefly introduce uh, our past and current partnerships on malaria diagnostics and vaccine uh, developments, especially. Uh, focus on how it all started and uh, then explain how it all advanced with PDPs. And secondly, I uh, put special emphasis on the global goal settings on global health research in academia. Uh, for, this is my um, key messages for the audience. And finally, a uh, summary of my talk. Please go to the next slide, please. Okay, this is uh, how our partners started. To explain our uh, history, uh, it will be helpful, sometimes helpful for the audience. In 1990, we have started malaria research in Ehim University by only two young scientists at that time. And first we started the malaria transmission blocking vaccine research by using rodent malaria model. And after the successful uh, cloning of the vaccine candidate genes in the rodent model uh, without patterns, uh, then uh, we will move into the human uh, parasite, plasmoid bivax, then start cloning the gene of the transmission blocking vaccine target. And that was successful by in collaboration with uh, the NIAID USA and Mahido University in Thailand. This is our starting point of human malaria uh, transmission breaking vaccine research with partners in academia. And this is, uh, in summary, our partnership in late 90s uh, established among academia with goals of scientific achievement. But uh, when Malaria Journal was opened in 2002, uh, at that time, Ehim University invented an innovative protein synthesis technology named wheat germ cell free system. In essence, uh, by using this technology, we can produce any proteins in a test tube by eukaryotic folia. Therefore, we think uh, this is suitable for malaria protein expression. Then, the wheat germ cell free system uh, affected a lot on our partnerships shown in the following slides. Next slide, please. Okay, in the post genome era, we jumped into the genome wide malaria vaccine research using the weed germ service system, especially novel antigen discovery of both blood stage and the transmission blocking vaccine candidates. After the successful uh, identification of a novel transmission-breaking vaccine of p 5 
we started the first uh, partnership with for this vaccine development with the PDP Path MVI uh, under the GHIT support in 2014. Almost at the same time, we also applied our VGM selfie technology to the identification of diagnostic agent on the bottom half of these slides. Uh, we, our target was plasma device hypnozoid diagnostic marker identification. In this project, our role with the self science company here uh, is to produce proteins and high throughput immune assay. And in this partnership, we have in Australia as a project management with cohort sample, provide the cohort sample and antibody measurement and big data analysis. And also the find uh, today's uh, uh, speaker here played a role on development of TPP of this uh, diagnostics and technology selection for future point of care diagnostics. So early 2000, we started our partnerships with the PDPs because our goal uh, now became from the scientific achievement to the product. Next slide, please. Okay, so now in recent five years, we have been focusing on uh, malaria vaccine development and expanded our partnerships on all three life cycle stages of the parasite. Left hand figure is a parasite, malaria parasite life cycle. And uh, our goal, target is transmission blocking vaccine number one to uh, cut the life cycle of the parasite in the mosquito. And then number two, pre erythrocytic vaccines to prevent infection of the parasite. And then number three, uh, asexual blood stage vaccine to uh, stop the parasite growth propagation in the human body. As shown in this slide, this GHID funded uh, project uh, involved uh, PDPs, PATH MBVI, PATH and EVI, as shown in this uh, slide. And these PDPs are playing a role on project management towards the preclinical and clinical development and multiple supports on assay developments. And our role as a Himeya University, as academia, are on the protein production and bioassay development. In summary, we have been playing a role based on our scientific ex expertise to establish mutually complementary partnerships for the product development. Go to the next slide, please. Second, next, uh, I'd like to uh, summarize our goal settings from an academia point of view. Next slide, please. As a global health researcher in academia, I believe that the goal settings of our research is the key on global health product development. If I set, at the beginning, if I set my goal is a scientific achievement, as a basic scientist. The, there's a lot of scientific achievement, but I will not progress towards product development. Next slide, please. If I set a goal of my research as a product development with global health impact, for example, my vaccine, I will make our research progress as target discovery, validation of the target, uh, optimization of the lead candidate, and so on. And getting closer and closer to the product development. However, there is a big gap, so-called uh, death valley, from the research to the de product development, as every, everyone knows. And what is the gap, for example, for us? Lack of budget to progress towards preclinical development as an academia, 
no idea how to contact PDPs. Risk of policy change in the partners even after the project progressed, and so on. So, even our goal is goal setting is product development. We won't be able to achieve this goal because of the big gap. Next slide, please. Okay, however, if uh, successful partnerships with PDPs, academia and company and so on is formed uh, under the GHIT support, the product development becomes a visible goal of our research activities, as you can see in this slide and our recent history in the previous slides. And the products will contribute to overcome this uh, global health needs to the healthy children, shown in this slide. Next slide, please. In summary, go to the next slide, please. So uh, this slide uh, is a summary of my talk, especially focus on the partnerships with the PDPs from the academia point of view. Because uh, the organizer asked these four questions, so I would like to answer one by one uh, instead of summarize. As a partnership with Path MBI, uh, we have started uh, collaboration since Malaria Transmission Breaking Vaccine Consortium started in 2000, a long, long time ago, because uh, we are the basic scientists of transmission breaking vaccine uh, from the late 90s. And the partnership find with find with was introduced by our collaborator in the PYVX hypnozoid diagnostic project, as shown in the previous slides. And the partnership with EVI, uh, we met each other and started discussion about the possibility of our collaboration at the GHIT annual partners meeting in 2016. There are lots of different uh, situations uh, to get to know each other. And question two, what was merit impact to us by the project with the PDPs? Uh, because uh, product development itself became a visible goal of our research activity. This is a big change. And the question three, lessons learned and the challenges from the partnerships. Uh, A, proceed based basic science research towards product development, uh, similar to the answer uh, from question two above. And establish a mutually complementary relationship with the partners. This is uh, learned during the project. And lastly, most importantly, establish of trustness through project activities. And the question four, how these lessons can be implemented in future projects with the PDPs? Um, to maybe the, repeat these answers in a different words. A, get ideas for the basic science research which will be useful for the future product development. B, continue to seek the best mix of partners with complementary expertise for future projects. And especially for the young researchers in academia in Japan, which I was grown up as this, I need to emphasize the importance of basic science research, which will contribute to uh, the product development for the global health directory or indirectly, immediately, or in the future. Please go to the last one. Okay, finally, I would like to acknowledge the members of Malaria Team Ehime and number of collaborators listed here. A division in our research center, Division of Malaria Research is now led by Dr. Ezo Takashima, and the Division of Molecular Parasitology is now led by Richard, Dr. Richard Carleton, and keep going 
And as you can see here in this slide, members uh, more than 30 now and uh, expanded more than two. Thank you very much. Thank you to Boy Sensei for your presentation about your work on malaria, which just started with two people, two scientists, but now grew up, up into the big group of 30, 30 scientists. Uh, really congratulations to your work again, Boy Sensei. And uh, thank you also for sharing us the lessons learned uh, from your experience, um, including the develop, um, development or uh, development in the gap that you find in the product development stage. I think we had a lot of take home messages today. Thank you so much again. And uh, to the audience again, uh, we please feel free to send any questions uh, via the Q&A box. And now we would like to move on to the panel discussion. And I'd like to invite um, all the panelists for today to be to show your faces again. Thank you. And I'd also like to invite uh, Dr. Kei Katsuno from JHIT Fund. OK, thank you. Thank you for rejoining us again for the panel discussion. So I have some questions um, to, to you. So I'd like to ask one by one, but please feel free to jump in if any of you have any additional comments to that. So first I'd like to address my question to find. So maybe either Willow or Sergio can um, answer this question. So what, what kind of collaboration would be possible with pharmaceutical companies and what merits or needs can you suggest for pharmaceutical companies to be in a collaboration with FIND on diagnostics to develop di diagnostics? Hello, you want to go? I, go? I can go first and then you can maybe specifically on some of the diseases uh, add something, Sergio. So I think one of the areas, Erico, and, and thank you again for, for the seminar and also to Professor Tsuboy and Hamano uh, for the great work and the great presentation on the joint work. As you can see, this work is a collaboration effort. And I think what we would uh, see possible is in all the diseases we mentioned, both industry and academic partners to, to, uh, to participate. And, and Sergio can talk a bit about some of the unmet needs. What I think we bring to the table between GHID and FIND in this partnership is uh, global connections. So we can bring partners to the table from across the world that are uh, contributing and adding to the uh, already existing uh, great infrastructure in Japan. Um, obviously, we can bring an access to uh, guidance bodies like WHO, um, because even the best developed diagnostics in the case we're talking about today will not go very far if there's no international guidance on how to use them. And WHO is, is, is the setter of those policies. So working with us helps us think through how to ensure that we as quickly as possible have the product on the, on the guidelines. And then of course, for the industry partners, we have the connections to some of the government, some of the funding partners, Global Fund for TB and Malaria and HIV. So working together with us also helps us think through how to bring the product to the market. So I think those are the three areas of work, global collaboration, um, ensuring global guidance, as well as uh, access to markets. And that's on a general level. So Sergio, maybe the diseases, of course, I think we have a lot of different products uh, and, and, and needs. Maybe you want to add something there? Sure. So uh, today we focus a lot on neglected tropical diseases that, of course, uh, have uh, urgent needs for diagnostics. FIND uh, has a wider scope of areas uh, that we work in, uh, from uh, NCDs, and we work in on diabetes. We are uh, venturing into cervical cancer and the uh, urgent need for tools to um, diagnose and early detect human papillomavirus. We have a track record also, not only on TB, hepatitis C. Uh, we know that what's coming uh, because of COVID and other um, stewardships uh, on antimicrobials, the need for diagnostics or companion diagnostics for antimicrobial resistance, something that is relevant to Japan, but also many countries in uh, low and middle income countries. 
Um, so the, the many areas uh, in, in terms of uh, technical disease aspects, but uh, pharma in Japan has been pioneering pan, um, access to new technologies like Professor Hamano already alluded to CRISPR uh, and others are uh, um, artificial intelligence, uh, imaging uh, are becoming uh, companion uh, tools to better diagnose. So, so the various industry partners that either developed key material for, for diagnostics or uh, in, in, the new, in the era of new technologies, uh, very necessary. So, and to, to just stress what Willow said, we are based in Geneva. We aim to generate evidence to change policy and advance uh, better um, um, evidence-based medicine uh, with diagnostics. Over to you, Erica. Let me add one more point on the market. <laughs> okay. My partners, that's important. I mean, you've seen uh, Professor Tuboy talk about 230 million people being affected. Dr. Hamano was explaining how many people are affected. Although it's not a super high income market, um, for those who are thinking that from an industry perspective, if we manage to ensure that the volume of usage is aligned with the need in, in the countries around the world, there is certainly a market uh, available for, for the partners there. Um, it will be a different model than in a country like Japan or in the United States, but there's certainly a market available and, and there's support to ensure that that market gets there. So I think that's the, the, the challenge we have together to create a relevant product, but with the skill we're talking about, I am sure we can make this a su success if we all yeah. work together. And maybe to stress where we work, so not only in Sub-Saharan Africa, but we have a, a big office in India and do quite a bit of work in Latin America. So just for, um, just to kind of give a sense of our footprint. Thank you, Willow and Sergio, for your key messages. I think that was very important and very encouraging to the Japanese partners. Thank you so much again. And um, then my next question I'd like to address to um, Hamano Sensei. So this might be difficult to answer, to answer maybe in front of uh, Willow and Sergio, but um, so. I'm sure you must have faced some difficulties uh, working with uh, P FIND, or not maybe especially FIND, but um, other PDPs or overseas partners. So can you um, tell us a little bit more about your experience or difficulties or challenges you had faced um, collaborating with your international partners? Thank you very much for critical questions. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, uh, what we uh, mentioned, uh, we initiated the collaboration or partnership with FIND uh, practically or actually from uh, 2019. And uh, we have no, we still, still we do not have any chance to see face to face, just online in this way. So we cannot link together. It, it's not so easy to know the personality at the first. So uh, the building the, uh, Reliability, not reliability, uh, like uh, Tsuboy Sensei mentioned, trust each other from the beginning was a difficult point. Uh, we didn't realize well what kind of load are required. Of course, uh, they kindly show us what they request us and uh, what we should do. But uh, that is a bit uh, very distinct from usually we do in the field side. And in the uh, partnership with FIND, we are requested to manage the field study, evaluation of the prototype, and uh, verification of the uh, design locked product. Uh, in either case, we need to know very much about the people work in the field and also the uh, culture or background in the area. We have been working in the Bangladesh or Kenya, but I have not yet worked in the Philippines. And we didn't know anyone uh, closely in the scientific field uh, in the Philippines. That was a start line. And uh, under this COVID-19 restriction, we are forced to uh, learn the project. So, but uh, I'm very much impressed by the preparation done by the find. 
So uh, we needed to uh, learn the field study in the Philippines remotely, but uh, find uh, kindly or uh, carefully prepared the training slide more than 100 pages in detail. So in the remote setting, we could do our train the P, not the PI, but the uh, uh, partner in the Philippines and the collaborator there. And usually we will go to the field and uh, share the knowledge or method face-to-face, uh, -face. so no difficulty. But this time, all of such kind of training was done. Training and monitoring and evaluation of the study, all of this process was done. Uh, in this way. So uh, that was a difficulty. But uh, again, I'd like to uh, appreciate the preparedness by the find every time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hamano Sensei, for answering that difficult question and also pointing out um, how find was prepared actually for this COVID pandemic in terms of the con continu continuous du during the studies. Thank you, Hamano Sensei. So I'd like to uh, address my next question to um, Tsuboi Sensei. Yes. So, um, so especially to Tsuboi Sensei, who's uh, also working with how we can approach young scientists to be to have interest to in this field. So my question is, uh, what is needed or what is actually missing in order to attract young researchers? Um, especially the Japanese researchers in this field of neglected diseases. And is there anything that um, G we, the GHIT fund, can facilitate this? Okay, so uh, as I summarize the, uh, the goal settings in my slide, that is my, based on my experience and my feeling. And uh, I want to transfer this key message to the younger generation of, in Japan, especially in Japan, because uh, uh, sometimes it, it, we once we form a partnership like this, it's okay. But now uh, we need to promote more younger generation to start new partnerships or to fight against uh, NTDs or malaria, whatever. But but uh, wh when I think about recall my experience, maybe the, from the G, I request G hit or Hamana Sensei Neken <laughs> to visualize one number one what is uh, pressing needs to overcome current global health problem this is one because uh, in japan uh, as we as uh, far as i know many very talented young active researchers in the basic science that's that's a huge number but the, in this uh, global health area especially tropical medicine or parasitology uh, the population is very small, but, but uh, I th think myself that why this interesting research field is not so famous, still not famous, is because uh, we need to visualize them. What is, there's a big problem in the world. This is unmet, what is uh, pressing needs to the global health uh, development? Number two, uh, more specific for GHIT request, visualize what are the missing products to find against these unmet needs. Okay, CRISPR-Cas or GenWide, blah, 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 blah. That's very good art for Japanese young scientists, but uh, uh, lateral for uh, our uh, point of care test. Maybe that from the, just the technology point of view, from the younger generation, oh, uh, outdated or something like that, but today, the audience who listen to today's uh, webinar, they know that, oh, there are very high technology in the POC. And this is more uh, important for a fight against global health. So anyway, so now uh, three, one, one is uh, what is unmet need? Number two is uh, what is the missing product to develop this? And the third one is uh, today's key talk to key message, what is PDP? Because, but PDP is very important, but uh, many young basic scientists doesn't know what PDP, uh, what is this uh, abbreviated like that? 
Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Tsuboi Sensei. Yes, I had. I need to confess that before I joined GHIT, I also didn't know what PDPs ah. were. So, <laughs> is even though I was in the, I was working in the, I have been working in the pharmaceutical area for more than six, six, seven years. I wasn't aware of the global health even, and I didn't know about PDPs. So it was my a great opportunity to uh, learn about uh, this field and also the great collaboration with the PDPs after joining GHIT. So that was my great um, sort of experience that I had. So yes, thank you. And I, we also think that it's very important to deliver this message to all the young researchers. So maybe um, Katsuno-san from GHIT, do we have, so I think we received a big message from Tsuboi Sensei today. So do Early. we have anything that we could maybe address? Um, sure, thanks, Eriko. Um, just wanting to echo um, the comments made by Tsubo Professor Tsuboi, um, underscoring the important criticality of uh, basic science and also how to engage uh, more and more young researchers in the field of product development for the neglected diseases. So I think your advice is greatly appreciated. And um, I think from a GHIT standpoint, if you take a look at the first couple of years of uh, with regards to the funding opportunities at GHIT, um, there has been somewhat limited number of applications and also awards made, uh, for instance, to young researchers. But um, in recent years, I think there has been a good trend in terms of uh, there have been greater number of applications as well as awards made to uh, young researchers. Uh, what the good example is uh, the colleagues of Professor Tsuboi, the ones uh, that were uh, listed in the last uh, slide of the presentation. So we're definitely seeing some encouraging and reassuring trend in the in that respect. So um, within the current circumstances with the COVID-19 situation, uh, having in-person meetings, um, are, uh, it's, it's pretty difficult to have in-person meetings such as as, uh, as Professor uh, Hamado just mentioned earlier, but using multiple opportunities such as the webinar today, um, I think we're in need of communicating these key messages that Professor Savoy mentioned to wider community uh, such that we can create more robust um, product development uh, community uh, for neglected diseases. So that'll be my comment. Back to you, Erico. Yes, thank you, Katsuno san and I, uh, we also, I also think it's uh, really important to continue working together with PDPs like we are doing today. And I think uh, Willow has kindly showed us today in a presentation um, about the keeping the promise um, that uh, all the PDPs are working together to promote what P PDPs are doing, how important they are. And I think it's also very great that they actually translated this into, the, into Japanese as well. So I think if you have any interest, we, you're wel we're welcome to visit our website and we also have the Japanese versions available. So we hope to continue this uh, momentum um, together with, with all the PDPs. Thank you. So uh, we only have a couple of minutes left for this panel discussion, um, but I'd like to address my last question um, to find again. So um, what is, uh, I think uh, you mentioned briefly about your projects, um, especially the GHIT funded project um, with the, the collaboration with the Japanese partners. But I wanted to ask you um, so about the experience um, with the Japanese partners and um, what potentials do you see in collaborating with Japanese researchers or pharma in the, in the future? Let me start and say you add. Um, Go ahead. I think on the on the high side, I mean, my, so for those of you who have been in Volpe GHIT longer, and I, I, I started working with GHIT from its start when I was at TB Alliance and doing TB drug development and now in diagnostics. So I've seen different sides of the collaborations. And the one thing that strikes me, uh, that has struck me about the collaborations is that there's a big uh, pride and wish of Japanese institutions to develop products and bring them to market. So I think that's the, the, the strong point. Uh, from many places, there is a clear commitment, but maybe not always a, a, an, a, an awareness of how to get these products to the market and, and, and especially in these complex markets we're talking about. The one thing that is open and we haven't seen so much possibilities around is in some of the products we have that I mentioned in my speech, 
could be considered orphan products. They are developed uh, by academics around the world, but they're looking for commercial partners around the world to, to create an actual product. And I think uh, both uh, Professor Amano and Professor Tsuboy talked about the challenge of converting scientific knowledge into, into products. I think there's an opportunity together to identify some of these products and to find partners for it in Japan that are willing to use their industrial and manufacturing expertise and translators into, into products uh, that are coming from abroad. In the same way, as I mentioned, the collaborations between Japanese uh, academic institutions and partners worldwide, uh, there's an enormous need of expertise that's available also in academic institutions that we could work with, with globally. So I think the uh, I think the one point that I would point out where there's a lot of possibilities is sort of bringing that bridge between what's happening internationally and what's happening in Japan and, and making that link stronger. And I think that's something we've been trying. As Professor Amano pointed out, with no travel and only Zoom available to us all, it has not always been that easy to make these connections, especially starting new partnerships. And I think that is hopefully something we can do again in the not too far, too far future. Yep, uh, I think to be kind, I think we've done well with all the restrictions, limitations, etc. cetera, uh, Erico. Could we do better? I mean, you put a challenging question to, to the partners about, uh, has it been difficult to work with Vine? <laughs> I think uh, we have two professors that I'm really thankful very much because uh, besides all the known challenges, uh, we've managed to engage with them quite well and, and successfully. But um, I think, uh, Erika, Japan's got a huge um, pool of, of knowledge of scientists uh, and, and industry partners. Often, the, whether it's Japan or other centers, the, the difficulties are in bringing them to maturity, as Willow points out. So it's in the last valley of death, as we used to call it, right? Good ideas, good partners, but then no market or no... Um, no, no understanding of how to get out of the factory if you want the product into uh, countries that we work uh, in, which are from the start challenging because they're, they're far remote and inaccessible is what we could do certainly better and have more, maybe we can bridge Willow, as you said, what the global lens is in terms of clinical guidance, where we think we're going and, and ensure that um, we have good, uh, you know, um, reciprocity from, uh, from that point of view. Um, so certainly we can do um, a lot better. Thank a good you, challenge Leon. to have. Yes, thank you. Yes, it is especially challenging in this COVID area, but um, we understand. But I think um, there have been a lot of achievements already uh, as well. And also uh, we have learned maybe special cases, but also development for COVID-19 has also made us, um, I think, had some a lot of learnings for how we can expedite the, the development. So thank you so much again for answering that and also the potentials to the Japanese partners. So um, we are running out of time, so I'd like to move on to the Q&A session now, as uh, we have received uh, several questions from the audiences. And I'd like to invite um, Mr. Hironobu Itabashi from the JHIT Fund to moderate this Q&A session. Thank you very much, Koyama-san. Uh, my name is Hironobu Itabashi, and I will, I will be moderating the Q&A session. Uh, let me brief, uh, briefly give you some instructions. So please uh, raise your hand if you want to speak and ask your question or use the Q&A box and send your questions. If you want to speak, uh, please make sure to say your name and also organization before your question. And it would be great if you could only ask one question to allow uh, other participants to ask their questions too. So let me uh, first of all start uh, with the questions. Um, if someone raises their hand. Um, okay, so I can see uh, Dr. Sophie, um, Howard, uh, who raised uh, the hand, uh, you must have received a pop-up um, showing that you could unmute yourself. So please unmute yourself and uh, ask your question. Uh, thank you, uh, Iwanabu. It was a mistake of me raising my hand. I'm oh. sorry about this. <laughs> Don't worry. Thank you very much. All right. So uh, if you could uh, unmute yourself. 
Thank you. So let's move on to the next um, question. Uh, let me double check again if we have someone raising their hand. Otherwise, we'll be moving to the Q&A box questions. OK, so I do not see anyone uh, from the audience raising their hand. So let me ask the question that we have received on the Q&A box. So I will be reading the question. Um, how can the exciting new technologies and partnerships we have heard about today be used to identify a highly sensitive test of cure for chronic indeterminate Chagas disease? This would be a huge step forward to the field. So I guess this question might go to either um, to fine colleagues and to the professors, uh, to Boy and Hamano since Professor Hamano. So perhaps we could start with uh, fine colleagues. Well, should I take this one? <laughs> if I understood you correctly, it's inter intermediate. So in it's it's before chronic uh, Chagas. Uh, and so, so Chagas is a disease that affects uh, the Americas and many other countries. It's, it's tricky because it's, it initially it's it's not easy to to clinically identify and then later on it it has major consequences to um the the heart and it can lead to cardiomyopathy so you, you end up years later having cardiac problems and not knowing what was the causing agents is almost too late and also in some cases esophageal problems so swallowing food becomes a problem and the diagnosis is not necessarily cancer of the esophagus but it could be chagas and um, early like in most diseases prevention is key early diagnosis is is essential but what makes it tricky is that later on uh, you may not be suspecting uh, that you have this disease and the tools available as uh, whoever asked that question uh, is, is, is not there. Together with a, a grant we have with UNITAID, uh, we are looking into this uh, area in endemic countries like Brazil, Bolivia, Paraguay, um, et cetera, Colombia. Um, and we can, pro it's, it's early on that consortium has only been, you know, it's, it's a couple, maybe about a year in, into its development. And it's looking both at particularly at that question on the rapid diagnosis and uh, linking it to, to treatment. So uh, it is an area we're working on through, through some funding, but uh, yeah, good, good question. And we can, through Erica and GHIT provide more details uh, uh, that you can disseminate on. In the, so we're looking into it. Good question. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sergio. Um, perhaps, uh, Willow, if you have any um, comments. No, I think this is, this is uh, enough. I mean, obviously, when we think about from the perspective of Virginia, if there's partners working on this area, especially if there are companies that have com companies, I mean, we are always interested, especially in areas that are neglected to get in touch, to start seeing if there's a possibility for developing a project in that area even though there's other funding that we can also potentially link it to. Um, in this specific case, we're also working uh, with DNDI, which is the other, which one of the other partners in PDPs with, with GHIT on Chagas. And I think there could therefore be interesting opportunities to develop something for the future. Maybe to just highlight an issue because point of care machines, are gen it's a box that can amplify the, you know, any nucleic acid. And that's one approach. So if there are manufacturers or people interested, um, it's, it's the little details of what we put inside the box that are not so difficult, but if they are uh, interested in, in that area, happy to, to yeah, discuss it further. And obviously rat rapid lateral flows. Thank you very much um, for your answers to this uh, great question. Um, I was wondering if perhaps uh, Professor Tsuboyi or Professor Hamano, if you have any additional comments to this question. No? no not me, not me. Okay, thank you very much. So let me move on to the uh, last question, unfortunately, because we are running out of time. So again, this question is addressed to uh, find colleagues. So what are the key factors that must be put together to achieve the 100 days mission for diseases such as malaria, uh, TB, and NTDs? It's a challenging question, but uh, please. Uh. Uh, that's a good question. So. Uh, I think the 100 day mission obviously has uh, gained traction as a roadmap to address uh, uh, public health emergencies of global concern, right? It's, it's, it's for pandemia. Uh, it's a good question in terms of that concept. 
to translate to malaria, TB, even, I mean, in HIV, we, we got there. Um, uh, the malaria is, is tricky because we're starting to see uh, mutations in some uh, subspecies that are leading to um, drugs not being effective. Finally, it is working uh, towards uh, 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 scalable and, and highly effective uh, rapid diagnosis. I think I have some colleagues from FINE maybe that are, have joined, but in the interest of time, I can tell you that the urgency for uh, NTDs or diseases uh, of public and global concern other than pandemics is, is key. And uh, a, a challenging point made there about that question that we, we have urgency in other diseases and epidemics that have not been controlled uh, like malaria, TB, and HIV. So um, again, happy to take that challenge on and uh, uh, you got my contact details and, and we can uh, discuss that further. Good question. <laughs> and thank you. And the question comes also to what the point we made earlier that we need to develop platform technologies that can easily be adapted. And I think TB, malaria, HIV form the basis of those for the future. Um, and some of the entities in terms of the different groups of diseases that also put us at risk as pandemic. So what we are obviously hoping for is an investment in pandemic preparedness will also translate into existing pandemics. And that's an area where we need to look at how do we ensure that with these new technologies, with CRISPR, with, um, with sequencing, with the, the knowledge on lateral flow that we've developed, how can we translate that into easy availability of products also of major killers like uh, malaria and TB? Good point. Eric, I think we're going to need a few of these series <laughs> with all the questions that are coming up. <laughs> Happy to do so and engage. Thank you very much, um, Sergio and um, Willa, for your uh, answers as well. So as much as we would like to continue with this uh, Q&A session, as mentioned by uh, Sergio, unfortunately, we're running out of time. So we'll, I'll be passing the microphone back to my uh, colleague, Eriko. So koyama -san, please. Thank you, Itabasan, for moderating the Q&A session. And yes, I think we need to have continue this session because as we, I think we have a lot of good topics that we can elaborate further. So um, thank you. So, sorry that we could not take all the questions that we received today. So we hope that um, um, we had a really good discussion today. And thank you again to all the uh, panelists today for the great discussion and for Dr. Sergio Carmona and Mr. Willow Brock from FIND, Professor Shinjiro Hamano of Nagasaki University, and Takahumi Tsuboi of Ehime University. So thank you again to all the panelists. And before we close this session, uh, please allow me to give a couple of uh, information uh, before, we, before we finish. So the next webinar session uh, of this series uh, on PDP's webinar series will be held in March as a joint session with EVI, the European Vaccine Initiative, and PASS MVI, Malaria Vaccine Initiative, to focus on the vaccine development. The registration page is planned to be opened next week, so please visit our website for more information. And there are also other upcoming webinars in fe February, which GHIT hosts, co hosts, or spon sponsors. So please stay tuned. And the questionnaire will be sent to you after the webinar. Your answers to the questionnaire will be really help us to improve and for our next webinar series. And we also welcome any ideas for potential partnerships and collaborations uh, with uh, all the panelists that have presented today. If, it would be great if you could take two minutes of your time to fill in the questionnaire. Thank you so much in advance. And finally, thank you for taking your time and joining us today for multiple regions. And we are look, all looking forward to seeing you again in our next webinar. Have a great day and thank you very much again to all the panelists. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.